we're we're gonna open it up and we're gonna start the meeting. After we do the roll call, I'm looking at the the agenda. I'm thinking after we do the roll call, the adoption of the agenda, and the acceptance of the meetings. Um, Cheyenne had a really um, outstanding um, icebreaker last time the executive committee got together, and we just kind of talked about how everyone's doing in the midst of COVID-19, um, the other things that were going on with George, um, George Floyd, you know, the riots, and you know, and now in South and North Minneapolis, all the shootings of the young people that are happening around our cities and just the violence period. Um, so we're and it's okay that we don't rush this session. Is that correct? Okay. All right. So, I'm, and I'm going by a script, you guys. Okay. Cheyenne, you're gonna be our note, our um, our note keeper. Uh, Rebecca is here taking. Oh, Rebecca's here. Okay, notes. Rebecca's gonna and, be the note keeper. Yep. And then um, also, whenever there's a vote, one mm -hmm. thing we have to do in this online format to comply with open meeting law is do a a verbal roll call. So right. Re Rebecca will call everybody's name um, and you'll say your vote when your name's called. So to adopt the agenda, to adopt the minutes, um, and then the, and any action items we have uh, on the agenda. Okay. Oh, I was thinking that was going to be Devin. That's cool. That's what we've been doing all my other commissioner. Okay. Okay. Commission <laughs> meetings. That works. Thank you, Miss Rebecca. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, welcome to the online meeting. My name is Lolita Davis Carter. Um, I'm going to be help monitoring or facilitating this meeting as Madam Chair. And I'm hoping that Jeff is here, isn't he? Please say yes. Is he here? Jeff. Jeff, Jeff is here. Jeff. And then we have is Devin. And then we have Mary. And then all the executive team is here. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, one thing that I'm finding out just doing these um, online meetings and with, meeting with different commissioners and different boards, if we can really ut utilize that chat, you know, or just use the hand because it's really hard when everyone's talking at the same time, especially if they got to keep detailed notes. And if you are using the chat, you know, you always wanted to stay who you are. Um, sometimes some individuals do not like to, if you have a question, some of them might just write it in the chat and some might just state it out loud. Me, myself, and I, I do both. I write it in the chat just for the note keeper because they can keep good notes, and then I state the question. But whatever you feel comfortable with, that I'm fine with that too. Um, and so, am I missing anything? I'm trying to go down. All right, so now we're just going to get into, if Miss Rebecca could do the roll call, that would be great. And I also just wanted to say, um, if someone just joined on their phone, can we ask who that is? I just saw a phone number. Again. Hello, it's Nate Streeter. Oh, welcome, Nate Streeter. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then, so we might mute people as well if there's background noise. If you're on your phone to unmute, you push star six. Okay. So I'm going to go through the roll. Um, I'll go by last name. Um, Commissioner Benda. Is Commissioner Benda here? John Benda. Okay. Um, Commissioner Kais Claudio. Here. Awesome. Um, Commissioner Carter. Here. Commissioner Dido Swinton. Here. Commissioner Gowan. Here. Commissioner Junek. Commissioner Junick. Commissioner Kimmins. Commissioner Queen Kimmins. Um, Commissioner Malone. Michael Malone. Okay. Commissioner Marcia Mariani. Commissioner Mariani. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Candace Miller Lopez. Here. Uh, Commissioner Mills, Marcus Mills, uh, Commissioner Nuda Lee, 
Laura Nudel Lee. Commissioner Strand. Jeff Strand. I am present. Right. And Commissioner Wise. I am present. And it looks like um, Commissioner Benda made it onto the call as well. Okay. Just barely. <laughs> Is that and, John Benda speaking? I think yes. it was John. Okay, because I'll count him as present then. Okay, well then we have um, one, two, three, four. Five, six, absent. Okay. Now, um, item two, we did roll call. And we going down to the agenda. Um, adaption of the agenda. Did everyone have an opportunity to read it and give you a couple minutes? Can you guys hear me? Did I take it off mute? Affirmative. Okay. I gotta read this real quick. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept the agenda? So moved. Strand. I second. This is Commissioner Wise. Okay. I gotta remember. I'm reading. How am I supposed to do this? Okay. Da -da -da -da. Motion second chat. Da -da -da. Any discussion? Now, do we have to do another roll call to say a or nay on the the everybody? Madam Chair, there's a comment that says I would like to add something to the agenda. OK, where's the comment? Thank yeah. you. Who's the comment from? Can you can you please state? Yeah. Who from Candace Miller Lopez. OK, go ahead, Candace. Um, I would like to add a set of recommendations from the neighborhoods 2020 to the agenda for approval by the full commission. OK. I'm trying to pull this up. Give me a minute, y'all. Give me a second. What the heck happened? Got it. Madam Chair, Commissioner Strand, that's could be contained under item three of reports. Okay. Is that okay, Commissioner? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Thank you, Vice Chair. I lost the screen. <clears throat> I lost the screen, you guys. I can't see anybody anymore. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Madam okay. Chair, may I ask a question on city process for the city expert? Is it possible for the chair to ask that there's unanimous consent or must the roll call be done regardless? Um, I believe the, it's Cheyenne Brodeen yeah. with um, Neighbor and Community Relations. I believe the roll call needs to be taken for every action item. Okay. And this, well, can we have a roll call? Uh, can we restate the motion? I just want to make sure if, if it's with an amended agenda or you're just putting the amended item under three. We're putting the amended item under three. And this is just for accepting the agenda so we can move on. OK, so I'll go by last name again. Um, Commissioner okay. Bent. I can't hear you. Oh, are you? Did you say Brenda? Yes. Um, here. Or, uh, I need an, an I and an, yeah. I. OK. I. Um, Commissioner Kais Claudio. Aye. Commissioner Davis Carter. Aye. Commissioner Dito Swinton. Aye. 
Commissioner Gowan. Aye. Paul Junek is still absent. So, uh, Commissioner Kimmins is absent. Michael Malone is absent. Uh, Commissioner Mariano is Mariani is absent. Uh, Commissioner Miller Lopez. Aye. Commissioner Mills is absent, I believe. So, uh, Commissioner Nuda Lee. Oh, she's absent. Um, Commissioner Strand. Commissioner Strand. Aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Wise. Aye. Okay. Uh, that's seven ayes and six absence. So the agenda has been adapted. Mm -hmm. Moving on to action item three, acceptance of the minutes from February 19th. We'll give a couple minutes, a couple seconds to review the February minutes. Can I interrupt for one second? Of course. I think that there are eight votes, not seven. Oh, apologies, I misspoke. There were eight eyes. Thank okay. you for the correction. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes from February 19th? I forward the motion. Second, Strand. Any discussion? Roll call. <laughs> Everybody ready? We ready. Uh, Commissioner Benda? Aye. Ice Claudio? Aye. Mr. Carter? Aye. Aye. Carter? Commissioner Dito Swinton? Aye. Commissioner Gowan? Aye. Commissioner Junek is absent. Commissioner Kimmins is absent. Commissioner Malone is absent. Commissioner Ma Mariani is absent. Uh, Commissioner Miller Lopez? Aye. Commissioner Mills is absent. Commissioner Nuda Lee, absent. Uh, Commissioner Strand? Aye. And Commissioner Wise? Aye. Eight ayes and six absent. Okay. The minutes have been accepted. We're gonna. I, um, we have an individual from the public that called in, and I want to be respectful of their time before we go in to just do our icebreaker. Um, does the individual have any comments that they would like to make to the NCEC currently right now? There was someone that called in. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was muted. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Um, no, I I just hadn't listened to one of your meetings in gosh, I don't know, a year and a half. So I figured I better catch up a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, I so have that's a question. Why I'm here. Okay, this is Madam Chair. This is um, Lolita Davis Carter. I have a question for you. Would you like to participate in our icebreaker? Um. Probably not just because I'm I'm actually working right now as well. So okay. I just was hoping just to kind of listen. Okay. I just wanted to um, show our respect and, and include you into our conversation because we try to be very inclusive to our community that we're currently serving. I appreciate that. We appreciate you. All right. All right. Let's move on to our icebreaker. I thought this was a very um, outstanding idea. Um, from Cheyenne with the executive committee and had an opportunity for us just to kind of connect a little bit. Um, 
I believe we're not going to take no time on it. We're not saying do a 15 minute speech, but we're asking you to share what you want to share because we will no longer be together anymore. So um, if if we can go in order to keep it in an orderly fashion by the roll call. Uh, so if Rebecca, if you can call our name and then give that person an opportunity to state how how they're doing. Maybe want to give us a little update on what's going on and how they're feeling. And then we could just go down that line. Does that work for everybody? Madam Chair, is this sure. like our farewell statements about the NCEC? Is that what this is or is that later? It could be whatever you like it to be, because to my understanding, we're not on a rush to do. We're not rushed for time. So like I have um, asked Cheyenne just for us to allow, because there's a lot of individuals that are around, was around the table now around their screens. that have been part of this uh, process for many, 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 many moons. And I just want to give them an opportunity to, you know, share some thoughts, voice some opinions, you know, say their farewells, you know, say their good, their bads and their indifference. So it's, it's really whatever you like it to be. And we do have some time um, under reports for closing statements from the NCEC commissioners. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to use this time for that, we could. But I also think we could do this towards the end as well. Okay. I'd, I'd move we do uh, any anything more than how we're doing for the end of the meeting. John Beck. Okay. So you guys want to you guys want to move the icebreaker to the end instead of the beginning? The top of the meeting. No, I second uh, Commissioner Benda's motion to move the closing statements to to leave the closing closing statements at the end of the meeting. OK, this is Commissioner Strand, I was simply asking for clarification. OK, so Can we leave this to chair's discretion so we don't have to vote again. Yes, OK, <laughs> let me just get a clarification so I'm, I'm clear. So are we are we going to do an icebreaker about just an update on how we're doing as individuals. And at the end of the meeting, we're going to do farewell goodbyes. Is that correct? Sure. Yes. Yes. Sounds good to me. OK. Does that work for everybody else? Yep. Sure. Yes. So do you want to go by last name again? Oh, then in that case, um, Benda, why don't you kick us off? Oh, um, <clears throat> doing well. I'm just great. Enjoyed the Minneapolis um, fun conversation yesterday. And I, I do want to say something at the end, but right now I'm doing pretty well. Thanks. Thanks. Um, what about uh, Christy Kais Claudio? Christy, Kais, Claudia, do you want to add anything? Yes. So we are, I'm glad school is over for once. The distant learning was a struggle. <laughs> so we are like calmer now. You know, we are officially on vacation and then we are going to Puerto Rico, so way calmer. Hopefully when I come back, everything will be better here. That's it. Um, uh, Lolita Davis Carter. Lolita, do you want to do your icebreaker? Should we skip to the next one? Um, what about Commissioner uh, Dito Swinton? Hi, um, I'm doing OK. Um, I just I hope that, you know, these 
incidences of violence, you know, the shooting, and I live very close to the uptown um, location, but I hope that the violence and the, the things that have nothing to do with what brought on the unrest after George Floyd's murder don't take away from what the protesting and the, you know, the, I, I don't even like to call it rioting, but what the protesting was about in the first place, um, it has nothing to do with George Floyd's killing. And I hope that it doesn't take away from the things we need to be focusing on. Um, Cause that's kind of upsetting. People are more upset that some windows were broken and whatnot, you know, than what led to a man dying under the knee of a law enforcement officer. But uh, all that said, I'm doing okay. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. Um, Commissioner Gowan. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm doing well. Um, regarding the riots, um, I was just four blocks from Lake Street, so um, it was pretty hairy, but I did post a bunch of photographs on my Facebook page, so if anybody's interested, they can take a look on Facebook. Um, and then regarding COVID-19, um, I had planned on spending all of August um, driving through Europe with my brother, but um, as we're getting closer to July, things are not opening up. And so <clears throat> probably we'll have to cancel that trip and postpone it till next year. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gowan. Um, the next four uh, has G uh, Commissioners Junet, Kimmins, Malone, or Mariana, Mariani joined. I don't think so. So let's go to the next one. And that's uh, Candace Miller Lopez. Henry, if you have to cancel your trip, we need to coordinate because I'm supposed to take my boys to Europe next summer and you don't want to be there when they'll be there. Um, in terms of how I'm doing right now, I feel like um, I get up every morning with a new and renewed sense of purpose. And I've, I've um, been feeling very useful um, as the community that I serve turns to me for answers and support and outreach coordination. Um, and so it's nice to be in a position to feel useful right now because I know so many are experiencing a sense of um, uselessness, like it's so big, the stuff that we're facing, that they're not sure where to even start or um, how to move forward. Um, and um, to mirror what um, Mary said, I think that what happens, unfortunately, is that um, we retreat back to our safe places and for our, our systems of um, white supremacy in this country, that safe place is in property. That's because we hold the property, that's where we retreat back. And that's why people are paying probably more attention than they should to broken glass than broken bodies. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner Miller-Lopez. Um, Commissioner Mills has just joined. Uh, would you like to do an icebreaker, Commissioner Mills? Tell us how you're doing. Yes, um, some. Uh, actually, for me, in a number of ways, this has become much more busy. Um, I am often being asked to explain uh, these times uh, to folks at, or um, delve deeper into what's going on. And that coming from a number of different angles um, simply, you know, requires more time, more work, and um, more varied concentration, so it's a bit exhausting. Um, other than that, um, in all honesty, this has been 
frustratingly close to normal. Um, a lot of Zoom calls, which was true before, and um, a lot of work, which it was true before, um, and a lot of suffering amongst people that I care about, which was true before. That's how I'm feeling. Thank you, Marcus Mill. Um, I think Commissioner Nuda Lee has not joined, so um, Commissioner Strand, do you want to share? Uh, thank you. Uh, I am carrying on to the best of my ability. I've been fortunately not overtaken by the COVID-19 coronavirus. I have been deemed essential, and so I'm, I'm really privileged to have been working steadily since March in the office in local government that supplies revenue to city, county, and school districts. I've been extremely busy like other colleagues, um, heavily engaged in the political process since this is a presidential election year and just nonstop uh, other political processes since March. Uh, I share the pain with my fellow Minneapolis residents and communities who live through the uh, you know, tragic experience of the death of Mr. Floyd and also the civil unrest. And the uh, as a person with a infrastructure perspective from 25 years of work with city capital investments, I, I, uh, I, I do care about the loss of, of facilities because I know that those are paid for by the hardworking residents and citizens of our community and that they will be very time consuming and difficult to replace. And there will be lots of challenges by the impacted residents of communities that were most impacted by the unrest from outside bad elements. Uh, but I'm fortunate to have been working to have had my health and to have had the ability to have my husband uh, shelter away since I am going to work every day. So it's a pleasure to get together with the colleagues on the NCEC for this final meeting. I hope you are all well. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Commissioner Wise, do you want to share? Yes, uh, first I'd like to say that I'm glad to hear that everyone is at least healthy and safe despite the many emotions that we're all going through. Um, I'm currently in Michigan, so I'm at my mom's house, so I've been able to spend a couple of weeks here kind of in the wake of the incidents in Minneapolis. So really just been spending a lot of time with family. My nephew's nine months now, so I've been able to spend a lot of time with him and my sister. There's definitely been an increase in the overall workload, I think, related to COVID-19, both in the personal arena as well as the professional aspect of it but i think it's really just kind of building skills and in, in my agility and my abilities to deal with adversity so overall i'm doing well and and been able to stay safe and healthy as well and looking forward to having more discussion around how we can be of service to the community given all of the the things that we've dealt with together over the past few months Thank you. Um, I think has uh, Commissioner Davis Carter gained audio? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, what happened was I have teams with my employer, but I logged on through the Internet, so it was not connected correctly. So I do apologize for that. Um, I have to say the past three months for me have been um, great opportunities to build fantastic relationships with individuals that I work with, with my neighbors that I didn't even know what was my neighbors. Um, 
with family. Yes, we do have a lot of, I don't want to say conflict, but it is conflict. We have a lot of conflicts. We have a lot of violence going on, but we have a lot of exposure of things that needed to be exposed. Um, so I think that I take now I'm learning how to take day by day, minute by minute, and situation by situation. And I'm just learning how to breathe. And I'm learning how to communicate in a way that I don't offend individuals. And if I do offend individuals, I make an effort to go back and, and explain my point of view. Not so much as always apologizing, but sometimes we are so filtered and non-filtered that we just keep moving without really realizing that this is not a this this individual is not a computer this individual has feelings and we need to start showing empathy so i took the last three months as an opportunity to learn more about myself learn more about my community and learn more about what i can do so i can make it better for my grandbaby that is coming up that's it Uh, did you want guests also to participate? Did we have a, another guest? Because the young man said he, he didn't have time. Not that he didn't have time, but he bowed out because he was still working. He just wanted to be a listener. Right. Did yeah. anyone else sign up? Log on? No. So, how about um, our how about our city, our city staff partners with whom we've worked that would be nice the years i i'd like to know how they're doing too i can go it's cheyenne um i um am doing well in the sense that um for me and my family we're um we've been able to stay healthy which um we're very thankful for but um you know, a lot of it is just um, there's a lot of anxiety and stress that comes along with a global pandemic <laughs> and um, really the um, upending of the historical trauma um, that some of our communities have faced in this country and more so, you know, locally in, in Minneapolis here. So I think um, I think everybody uh, in this conversation uh, is responsible in some way. I think it's going to vary for everybody individually, but um, I just hope that we're all moving in the same direction um, with whatever whatever that looks like for you. Um, just moving, just moving the direction of um, of racial justice and change. I'll jump in. Uh, this is David Rubidor, director at NCR. Um, one, I appreciate everybody sharing your thoughts and uh, feelings tonight about um, where you're at. I would say uh, I've kind of stopped asking people how they're doing. Um, I'm, I'm doing OK. Uh, I want to just kind of mention more so that our staff actually have been um, doing some really stellar work in the community, both with the uh, um, onset of COVID. And COVID actually has very different um, impact in, in all the different communities that live in the city. It's not a uniform impact. It varies a lot. And many of them were putting in many extra hours and a lot of um, commitment to making sure that their communities were needs were being addressed and that the city was adjusting as best as it could in order to continue to support that. And then with the uh, the George Floyd uh, murder and unrest, many of them have been taxed considerably. We uh, spent many, many nights um, a couple weeks ago up till two to four o'clock in the morning, just trying to monitor and get information out to people across the city. So um, I just wanted to say that just in great appreciation for um, their commitment to their community and the work that they were doing. Um, and wanted to thank them and have take this opportunity publicly to just let everybody know um, that we really have a very committed team. We have a great group of individuals um, that are working with you and with us um, at the city and with the community and just wanted to acknowledge that. 
Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to share before we move on to discussion? Okay, moving on. Item five, approval of the annual report. I'm going to turn this over to Commissioner Wise. Yeah, so the annual report should have been sent out and finalized. So if there's not much discussion to be had around any edits or additions, um, I will be prepared to vote on the approval. Okay. Madam Chair, um, Commissioner Strand raising hand. Yes. Um, it would be great if Commissioner Weiser does the staff have any ability to um, just briefly um, show the document for our committee and the public? I mean, I understand Commissioner Wise and others had a fair amount of work in this annual report, so I, I think he or someone should at least um, highlight a few items of it. I can screen share it. Just one second. Thank if you. Want, you. If you want to talk, just talk more about it um, while I do that, that would be great. If you, Commissioner Wise, when it when um, staff puts this on, when she shares it, can you just kind of go through each, give us a brief um, summary of each section, if all possible? Yeah, so I could do that. Thank you, sir. Can everyone see? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, so it just has each of the commissioners are all on there. Um, I wouldn't, there wouldn't be any edits for me proposed in terms of that. And then there's an executive summary which covers the key tenants of the NCEC over its duration and it highlights the key role in the conducting the neighborhood's 2020 meetings and a lot of the work that went into that. Um, so if you want to keep on uh, scroll down. Yeah, so this covers this major establishment, the major initiative, which is the neighborhood's 2020 um, framework work groups that that occurred um jeff i'm not sure if you wanted to give more detail into the work that the neighborhoods 2020 group has done or candace i know that you had mentioned you had some additional information from that group so if you wanted to speak on that a little bit that would be a good opportunity to do so um i, I think i'll wait till we just do the overview okay yeah but yeah and thank you very much to the neighborhoods 2020 committee and, and getting all of that good work together for for the NTEC. And then this covers chronological history. So what I wanted to do with the annual report is really be able to give somebody who is unfamiliar with the Neighborhood and Community Engagement Commission and its relationship with the NCR um, and that they would be able to understand what the goals and what how we achieve those goals and this chronological history is pulled from various city sites and other news sources that was pulled via star tribune or other local news sources are included within each of the months of descriptions and that covers the full calendar year of 2019. Okay. And then this is brief description of the committees and task force. Um, this is the one area where I would open it up for any additional uh, documentation or conversation or general context around the committees and the work that they've done because this just gives a brief overview um, essentially per our bylaws. Okay. Uh, 
Chair, Madam Chair, Commissioner Wise, Commissioner Strand Devin here. So I see there's some additional photographs. Yeah. Community connections. And welcoming week at Powderhorn Park. So, Commissioner Strand, um, Vice Chair, you're saying add ins? I'm, I'm sorry, he, you guys are talking at the same time. I didn't catch what you were saying. Well, I apologize. I was hearing like hammering or construction. The uh, Community Connections Commissioner staffing the table at Community Connections Conference and then the uh, tabling with NCR Department at the Welcoming Week table at the Powderhorn Park okay. event. So you wanted to add more information under those bullets or you're just highlighting? I was just highlighting those. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Conclusion. Commissioner Wise. Yes, this just gives another brief overview of some of the goals of the Neighborhood and Community Engagement Commission in addition to some history of those goals and where the documentation and the evolution of the body. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you for all your hard work that you put into the annual report and thank you for all the commissioners that um, helped him with the information that was provided. Do we have any discussion before we do any voting or anything like that about the annual report? Any questions? Well, I have a question for staff. OK, um, so Ms. Cheyenne, the annual report is here. What is the process of getting it approved and putting it online and we're actually finalizing everything? I just needed to know that process because I was not able to find that information anywhere. Sure. So um, if, once you guys approve it today, mm -hmm. then we'll post it on our website and online. And um, one, um, you know, one thing we still can figure out uh, with the executive committee is a final presentation to the city council. Okay. Um, you know, it could be this, it could be this, and then additional work added on, right, through the history of the body. That stuff I think we can work through and talk through. Um, we're still working with the clerk's office to figure out when um, the timing would be best to bring that forward. Um, it most likely will be within the next month or so, but um, we definitely can check in on that. So when you approve this, it's done, it's official, and then we can talk about what kind of presentation we, we do um, to the uh, full council, including the sunset, um, when, when the clerk's office brings the final sunset um, resolution forward, so. Okay. That, the only thing that I, I would like to add before the upload is just more photographs of the programming and community events that we've done. So if anybody has those, if you could forward those to my email, um, I would definitely like to get some more photographs so that it's just not a text document. Can we do like a timeline? Because the whole key here is, is I would like for this to be up, up, up and running before we get sunset. So we yeah, don't I would, get yeah, I would move to approve the, okay. to approve the annual report with additional photograph gallery to be added if there are submissions from okay. members of the community. Second strand. But back up, back up, back up. That's not my question. We're gonna, we're gonna prove it. We're gonna do that. My question is, what would be the timeline? And you're looking at for people to provide that to you. This is the discussion component of it. So we will, after we approve it. So you're thinking within two weeks, or within a month, or within a week, within seven days? No, within. I would, I would say just by the end of the week to get it uploaded to the site by Monday. 
Okay, so you're asking for people by Monday to get you photos or any more information so you can get it to, so you can get it uploaded and we can get it to Cheyenne by Friday of next week. If they get it to you by Monday, you can get it to Cheyenne by Friday. Yeah, I would say to just have to me by Friday where we can just approve as is. I'm willing to see to the will of the group on this one. If there's not any photos, then there's no need to to give the timeline. But that's just my proposal and my motion. And we can open this. I believe discussion there's. On that. Okay. Do, do any commissioners have any photos that they feel that they want to add in or anything like that? Or are we just going to prove it as is? Madam Chair, this is Strand. I would suggest approving the 2019-20 report as is. Okay. I was thinking the same thing. Okay. All right. So, let is there a motion to approve? Are we guys? Is there a motion to approve? I mean, a motion? Yeah, to a motion to approve. I think. Wise yes. had been. What? Devin, Mr. You Wise. Had moved it and Commissioner Strand had seconded it. Okay. And we had it. There's any more discussion? I guess we got to do a roll call. All right. Um, Commissioner Benda? Commissioner Benda? John Benda? I'm sorry. What's the roll call? A motion to approve the annual. <laughs> you know, I, I'm hearing it all. But I'm, I think it's the protocol I lost. I'm high. I'm four. Okay. That's high. Yes. Okay. I'm awesome. four. Okay. Um, Commissioner Kais Claudio. One of the things that I can do it. Commissioner Davis Carter. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Dito Swinton. Aye. Commissioner Gowan. Aye. Uh, I believe Commissioner Junek, Commissioner Kimmins, Commissioner Malone, and Commissioner Mariani are still absent. If you're not absent, say something. Okay. Um, the next one is Commissioner Miller Lopez. Aye. Commissioner Mills. Aye. Commissioner Nuda Lee is still absent. Um, Commissioner Strand. Aye. Commissioner Wise. Aye. Okay, that's nine eyes and six absent. I mean, sorry, five absent. <laughs> it's okay. So the annual report is approved and accepted. Thank you, Commissioner Wise. That was an outstanding. I love the report. Thanks a lot. And thanks for all your help, other commissioners, and for everything you have done. Moving on to item six, approval of one Minneapolis fund rec recommendation. Um, Cheyenne, did you want to talk about the staff report? Um, I can talk about the staff report, but actually we're um, joined by Erica Myers. Oh. Um, and she's actually led the work this year, so she'll be speaking to it and I can chime in where necessary. Okay. As well as um, other members of the one Minneapolis fund committee. So, OK, come on, come on down. And I'll screen share the recommend the staff report. Thank you. Hi, Miss Myers, how are you? Hi, Lolita, how are you? I'm good. Well, good to hear you. You're, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it was nice to see your face when you were up on the video. It's nice to see people's faces. <laughs> yeah, see, if I turn the video on, it's going to mess up again, so I'm trying to, to work it out a little bit. Right. <laughs> it's good to hear your voice. Thanks. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, everyone. Um, so last night, uh, the One Minneapolis Fun Committee met, and this year we received 41 proposals. We had... Um, there were a few that were ineligible, so in the end, I think we all ended up reading 39 proposals. Okay. Um, 
This year, our total fund available was $157,000. So we were only able to make about seven awards. Oh. This year, in addition to the one Minneapolis fund committee members who were on the grant panel, we also invited a few city staff just to get a few more voices in and kind of spread the love because we had so many proposals. And each, each panelist reviewed about 15 proposals and then we got together and talked them over. Um, in the end, we ended up choosing, Cheyenne, can you put it down to, to the folks that we chose or that were awarded? So as you can see on the screen, these are ultimately the organizations that we have chosen to recommend for funding. Um, in this document, I believe everyone received this document today, the staff report. It has a little um, project description of what they're going to do. Um, I will say that it's kind of a tough uh, it was a tough task for the panel because there were so many amazing projects. Um, but in the end, the recommended organizations were the Dial Group, who do kind of engagement and art in the schools, West Broadway Business and Area Coalition, who is going to um, partner with Juxtaposition Arts, and they're going to create an open space and some COVID relief. African Community Services, which serves our African um, immigrant community and doing a lot of um, resource referral and business development. Heritage Youth Sports Foundation, um, which is going to have, sorry, I can't, they um, run a sports foundation or a sports group and they support um, what they call athletes who are youth athletes who act as mentors in in the community the national society of black engineers which is an organization that focuses on stem activities for african-american youth oh, wow. black and african-american oh. youth um inquilinos unidos por justicia mm -hmm. um who do uh renter rights um in particular they have a co-op that they are working to get completely owner-led and so they're working with a leadership team for that and then the southeast asian diaspora project which is going to be doing a lot of um covid relief and covid information to the southeast asian community so that is um kind of a, a quick breakdown these are the folks that we would like uh, the committee in the whole to recommend funding. Okay. Um, for this component, this is Lolita, Madam Chair. I am going to have to um, excuse myself from this voting or approving of this because some of these um, organizations are some of my grantees. <laughs> So okay. I could not um, do this component. So I'm going to ask Vice Chair Jeff Strand to take over if all possible. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. So then the uh, the next uh, what is in order will be uh, per the action in February. The NCEC, rather than trying to redo the work of this committee and all the hours and hours of it in this compressed time frame, a motion to approve the recommendations of the committee up and down would be in order. Is there a motion? I, I present. Have a motion for approval. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Commissioner Wise. Commissioner Wise. I'll second. Third. Commissioner Miller Lopez will second. Okay, so we have moved and seconded. Is there discussion on the recommendations from the one Minneapolis fund committee? Or did any of the committee members wish to make very brief comments about the proposals for the benefit of the other commissioners? Yeah, I just, uh, um, I, I just want to share that my experience of it was just that everybody was just so 
so good at listening and sharing, and it was very, but very broadly BIPOC focused, and it addressed all the things we were concerned about: systemic racism, development, leadership, neighborhood empowerment, even housing and COVID responses, youth development. I was just really impressed with how we kind of found a balance in those groups we chose finally that we could support all those initiatives. So I just it just was a real pleasure to do it. Thank you. Other commissioners have comments? Uh, I have a comment. This is Commissioner Gowan. Yes, Commissioner Gowan. Yeah, I'm just a little um, disappointed in the report um, in that, you know, I see who is receiving the funds and, and I see who's not receiving the funds, but there wasn't really a very clear explanation of what the criteria was that separated those that are getting the funding from those that didn't. And so, um, you know, uh, it's hard to for me to, to say yes, these are the best ones when none of the none of that evaluation data is included in the report. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Gowan. I think um, NCR staff could very briefly talk about the very detailed uh, evaluation schema that is in place, has been in place. Sure. Erica. Um, yeah, absolutely. Cheyenne, would it be possible? Do you have the score matrix and be able to share it on the screen? Yes. Um, so to answer part of the question, um, this year we had two funding groups and one group was called the One Minneapolis Engagement. And so that was um, a fund of up to, you could apply for up to $25,000 on program or projects and programs that worked to engage um, to engage uh, communities in Minneapolis and predominantly um, from the board and commission report the <laughs> folks that we target are the ones who um, are traditionally underrepresented on boards and commissions the a new a new funding group that we included this year was called COVID-19 engagement, and that was really to get at urgent immediate needs to the most impacted neighborhoods. So those were the two funding groups. This um, on the screen right now is the scoring matrix. And so essentially every question um, that was on application, the organizations would have to answer and then the panelists scored each question and then questions are weighted and they get a score. So what we did, because not everyone read every proposal, is we had at least three people read each proposal and then we are when all three panelists, their top seven, if all three panelists included a proposal in their top seven they were put into um, the discussion group and the same with proposals that had two people who agreed that the top seven proposals so um this is kind of all the questions soaring rubric and then we had a lot of conversations about um, what we liked about proposals what maybe concerns were which were favorite and then out of that we took a vote. Does that get at your question, Commissioner? Well, well, I think you know. I see how you were how you were scoring the applications, but it would have been helpful if you had shown the scores of the applications in a in some sort of a summary table and and shown where the cutoff was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thanks. Hey, um, it's Cheyenne um, speaking. I'll have to double check, but I don't believe that scores are public. There's a lot of parts of this process that aren't actually public. Um, so 
I can double check, but historically we have not, we don't share that information. Um, we do offer up to the organizations that didn't get funded. Like we do talk to them about their proposal and um, different aspects of it in that sense, but um, don't broadly share um, scores. Yeah, and if, if I can add, this is uh, David Rubidor. Um, in addition to that, uh, I know for a fact that the uh, applications that were not funded are not public. Um, and the information contained in them are not public. So um, at, you know, uh, at the best we can do is show you who was approved and show you the process that was used to make the decision. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Rubidor and um, Cheyenne and Erica for your detail. May I um, make a friendly suggestion for uh, Commissioner Gowan and the NCR department that uh, Perhaps whatever body evaluates the one Minneapolis fund next cycle. That if he's willing and able, uh, Commissioner Gowan could be afforded the opportunity to apply to be on that evaluation committee. I, I don't think that's necessary and, and that train's already left the station. I think we've already appointed <laughs> made those appointments. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. How are you guys? Um, were there any other comments? I, I'd like to make a comment. I think this is a fantastic program. I'm so glad that the NCR and NCEC have been able to carry it forward to the end of the line for the commission. Um, I, I regret and I spoke to the council at past budget meetings about increasing, not decreasing the funding, and I would hope there'd be some opportunity for making connections for the uh, neighborhood organizations which have available funds and could program some of the additional activities that were not selected and not funded, not necessarily because they were not also very thoughtful and worthy, but they did not, you know, reach the top level of the evaluation rubric. And so that would be my hope. Uh, like in particular, uh, a very uh, extremely affordable housing project that I am trying to champion in my own community. Which I won't name, of course, but thank you, commissioners. Are there any other comments? Otherwise, we'll uh, move to a roll call vote. I just wanted to quickly thank everyone um, who put so much time and energy and heart into the evaluation and the reading of proposals and the great conversation yesterday. Thank you all. You were awesome. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Shan. Appreciate it. Very good. Then we'll uh, the NCR staff. Uh, Call the roll of commissioners on the vote for adoption of the recommendations. Okay. Um, Commissioner Benda. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Kais Claudio. Aye. Okay. Lolita, did you say you were abstaining? Yes, I'm abstaining. I think I actually, um, Rebecca, I think she's recusing. Her, she's recusing herself. Yeah, because I can't vote on this. Yeah. Conflict of interest. OK, I have exactly four options, so I have to write it, Dane. OK. Um, OK, uh, Commissioner Dito Swinton. Aye. Commissioner Gowan. Abstain. Um, Commissioner Junek, Kimmins, Malone, Mariani, and Nuda Lee are still absent. I'll move to the next. Um, Commissioner Miller Lopez. Aye. Commissioner Mills. Aye. Commissioner Strand. Aye. And Commissioner Wise. Aye. Okay. So you have. Um, Seven eyes, two abstentions, and five absent. Thank you. That is adopted, and I'll uh, hand the gavel back to Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, moving down to discussion well, number set. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Order. Is is the vote seven to five to two actually passing? The five people are not present are not even voting. So the vote was seven, zero, and two abstentions. But don't you need a majority of the committee to move a motion? Or just a majority of the present? Members present. Present. That's what I yeah, um, this is David Rubber. I'll jump in here. Yeah, it is. It's a majority of the uh, members present. All right. Thank you for that clarification. I'm going to miss you. With a quorum, okay. of course. Yeah. I'm going to miss you guys. OK, discussion. Uh, moving to item seven, closure of neighborhoods 2020. I'm going to turn that over to Commissioner Strand. Uh, thank you. I think I have my microphone unmuted. Mm -hmm. OK, well, uh, Neighborhoods 2020, uh, because of the. Closure of local government offices and the lockdown of the uh, <clears throat> state under the COVID-19 pandemic. And the inability the committee will not much less the commission, but as well as the subcommittees to meet. Uh, we really have not had an opportunity to to meet as a subcommittee for what about four months and um, however we did talk prior to the lockdown and we did um, discuss our next steps and so i would like to uh, thank the committee members and remind people that neighborhoods 2020 has been working on this since uh, 2015 but i would like to uh, ask that uh, Commissioner Miller Lopez present our uh, closing statement. Thank you, Commissioner Strand. Um, Cheyenne, could you please put up the, I put the our recommendations in the comments, but if Cheyenne could put up the document, that's great. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so, uh, Primarily what we had discussed, you know, prior to kind of getting everything shut down and limiting our capacity to continue to meet um, was connected to the fact that we all participated in the many um, community meetings that took place, <clears throat> pardon me, um, through the uh, process that Kira was hired to do. And our takeaway from that, um, the committee members takeaway from that was really that there, we did not see that there was widespread, um, I'm sorry, my dogs are gonna start to bark now. That's okay. No. <laughs> that is okay. As, as soon as somebody barks in the, in, the, in the neighborhood, the dog alarm goes off, I call it. So <laughs> barking back. Um, but, um, what we our takeaway from that was that there we didn't feel that there really was widespread um, approval of the that process or the direction that that process was going in, and um, there certainly wasn't um, by our um, experiences widespread approval for the the neighborhoods 2020 plan that was then rolled out at the community connections conference or the iteration that came after that in terms of um, the final one that was put out for public approval. And that was right at the time also when things were getting shut down and neighborhood organizations were being really limited in their capacity <clears throat> to, to conduct effective and wide reaching um, outreach and feedback um, sessions uh, around this. So um, based on all of that, um, uh, we came up with a couple of recommendations that we feel, Cheyenne, can you roll it up a little bit, please? Or roll it down, I mean, you can keep going. There we go. Um, so the three recommendations that we came up with, um, really um, pay attention to the fact that so much work has gone into this. Um, you know, since 2015, that um, the commission has been working on neighborhoods 2020. Um, that our circumstances, our, our, our world circumstances right now are very, very different than they were when this process started. 
<clears throat> and we feel like the um, the potential for neighborhood associations to really um, um, elevate the work that um, city government is going to have to do towards meeting some ambitious goals of um, uh, tearing down systemic racism and um, rebuilding our communities and revisioning what public safety means, that there's a vital role for neighborhood associations to play in that. And we don't think it's the time right now for the city council to be um, voting in a plan that even in this moment no longer feels like it's going to do the work that it's intended to do. So the three recommendations that we have are that, that the city council po postpone any vote on neighborhood 2020 until after January 1st, that we recommend that the uh, city council extend the current community participation program through at least June 30th of 2021. Um, that being said, it's important to note that there is no legal requirement for the city government to um, end the community participation program at this time. And we further recommend that funding for neighborhood organizations continue at current levels to ensure that they are able to meet the needs of our communities in these very uncertain times. Um, I can speak from my personal experience as a neighborhood association executive director. I have been working 12 and 14 hour days for the last three months um, and even more over the last um, four weeks um, since George Floyd was murdered. <clears throat> I am, for the first time in my experience in doing this work, we are doing less pushing out into the community and more receiving of the community's calls. Like I get calls and emails um, from starting at about seven o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night from people in the communities that are looking to their neighborhood associations um, for support and guidance and um, a sense of connection to the community. Um, and I, I will speak on behalf of my um, Southside United Neighborhoods group, which is a group of seven neighborhood associations in South Minneapolis who are all experiencing um, a similar influx of, of, um, of need from our communities. And I think that it would be um, just really bad timing to do something that would have such a dramatic impact on the um, I guess the stability of this 70 strong network of neighborhood organizations. I'm, I'm open to questions. Are there any questions? This this is um, Lolita, um, Madam Chair. I do have a question. I'm sorry, I was having internet problems again. Um, okay. But this question is pretty much um, it's going to be directed towards staff. As I'm reading the agenda, and to my understanding, this was going to be like a brief summary of the closing of 2020s. And Commissioner um, Lopez, she um, produced recommendations. So what is our guidance on that process? And where do we go from there with these recommendations? Uh, uh, Chair Lolita, commission members. So I was um, unaware that there was going to be recommendations from the commission. So, um, you know, we have these now before you. Um, and so I believe it's up to the commission to decide how you want to handle this. Um, you know, we have the document now and it was discussed. So it's a part of the public record and we'll get it posted um, to the website. But, um, you know, I can share that uh, in the guidance that we've been requesting from commission members is to um, have this information um, available before the meeting so everybody can um, review it and be aware of it. So, um, I guess uh, at this point, um, this is what's before the commission to decide whether or not you want to approve 
the recommendations that have been present these recommendations that have been presented yeah thank you for that Cheyenne I do have just a few clarifying questions and I think um, if, if we're all ready to open this up for discussion um, would you mind scrolling up to the first two points for me and so are we looking to postpone in terms of voting so i guess what was the next thing on council's voting docket for in in relation to neighborhoods 2020 so, so i'm uh, just looking for a clarification around like yeah, what the next vote is um, so this uh this is uh david rubador i'm gonna i'll jump in here um yeah. to give you some guidance on this uh so the the uh the council established the neighborhoods 2020 steering committee which you guys are aware of um it's been mm -hmm. a over a year now um their last meeting was canceled because it was scheduled on the week of it, um, a couple days after george Floyd was murdered um and so to, we're meeting again this week so that'll be our next meeting as of right now um the council has not changed the timeline um we extended it by um, three months when uh, covid first started in order and at that time the, the recommendations were sent out for public comment um and basically the comment period now has been open for by the time we get to mid july i think it's july 15th is the deadline they will have been open for about four and a half to five months i don't know the exact timing it was 45 days and that was extended another um it was extended another three months so okay. if, if you pass this tonight what I will do is I'll, I will I will bring this to the steering committee this week to let them know. Um, it will be up to the steering committee uh, that would be making any recommendations to the council if any changes to that timeline are made. Otherwise, if they do not want to make any changes, the comment period would end in mid-July. Again, July 15th, I believe is the date. And then the council would vote on the final recommendations in August of this year. Okay, and so the comment period, if I'm doing my math correctly, would have started kind of mid February, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I don't have that date directly in front of me. Um, okay. I think it was like at the very end of February, but I'm, I'd have to, I'd have, maybe it was into March, or excuse me, excuse me, end of January. I think it was at the very end of January, because we try to have it open. Okay, my sorry if um. It's a, you're testing my memory on this. There's so many things that have happened. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. No, if no I worries. remember right, the, the, the comment period the was not open thing. during the Community Connections com Conference, but it opened like a week later. Okay. So, yes, okay. it was mid-February when yeah. the comment yeah. period opened. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, it has been open for, <laughs> it'll be roughly five months. Respectfully, Mr. Rubidor, I think that um, what happened was that there was a draft set of guidelines that were presented at the community connections conference and then the full yeah. um plan was supposed to come out the following week and it was delayed an additional week so yeah it was, it was the end of february yeah so it was in february when it was released i don't remember the exact date off the top of yeah. my head but there, were, well, there was just, a there was a 45 day comment period that was established which is normal and then the council extended it three months Again, respectfully, Mr. Rubidor, the um, the uh, challenge here is that we got um, COVID-19 shelter in place orders and our schools closed in the middle of March, which severely restricted the capacity of neighborhood associations to do any kind of effective outreach on this. Uh, Commissioner, I'm not I'm not um, challenging the content of the message. I'm I'm just clarifying the timeline. Well, uh, that's Madam what Chair, I'm trying to do, sir. Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner yeah. Strand here. I I don't know how we're raising our hands using that function. Um, as the uh, committee subcommittee co-chair chair, um, I just want to point out this this is the committee's final report out. So regardless of actions taken, this this is the the report out document pursuant to the agenda that was prepared. So these are the final report out recommendations of neighborhoods 2020 to the NCEC. So we would we the committee members would appreciate this being at least entered into our meeting record. At okay. this point, nobody has moved the items, so 
I will. Give me. Yeah, I me, just. Yeah, I was gonna say. If you can give me a moment. Preference. Okay, everybody, let's let's step back just a moment. Okay. Um. Neighborhoods 2020 is a very sensitive um, component in everyone's lifestyle, from employment to personal. And we, we have had a lot of things happen. Why did I ask the question? Because I wanted to make sure that are we going to um, enter this into record? Are we going to do approval? Because I just need a clarification on what this process is going to happen. Yeah, I think we're having. A I will clarify yeah. that right now. Yeah, I just yeah, and um and so I just need everyone just to step back. I I I don't mind the recommendations. I don't have a problem with the recommendations. I just needed to get a clarification from staff, just because we didn't have this document shared before, and we had a some type a little training about things that how we need to present documentation because this is a public forum. So I wanted to make sure that the hard work that Miss Candace put into her recommendations in the committee, you know, can we vote on those? That was my only concern. I just needed clarification that was that okay for us to do that. And staff said since it was a public document, we all was able to view it. It was a public document. I'm not debating if we should and we should not. I just wanted to make sure that these recommendations will be heard. Yes, and I think we we're okay. having a discussion on that. So, Marcus, I'm sorry I cut you off, but if you wanted to go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I would like to make a motion to accept uh, this uh, document um, into our record to um, move these recommendations as uh, recommendations of the NCEC, not the only, but some recommendations of the NCEC, and um, to officially uh, render this document, including the recommendations, as um, N, not the only, but N, um, uh, what's the word? Um, a comment uh, of the NCEC into the uh, commentary uh, accepted within the comment period on uh, Neighborhoods 2020 for the council. That's my motion. Okay. Second, second strand. Wait, be, wait, y'all, slow down. Before you second the motion, I need a clarification of exactly what you're saying. Um, Commissioner Mills, can you tell so, um, what I'm saying is that this document, if we approve this, I'm, I'm making a motion to approve the document for our records, which is okay. what we need to do. Okay. Um, I'm making a motion in the same motion. I am saying we should say that this document is a not the only, but a uh, recommendation of the NCEC so that uh, uh, so that uh, Director Rubidor can bring it as an official uh, recommendation of the NCEC to the meeting that he is referring to. And then third, as also a part of this motion, that this that these recommendations and this document be made an official comment, an official comment, not the only official comment uh, of the NCEC. A, an official comment to the uh, neighborhoods 2020 process so that the council can see it in their uh, uh, in their uh, okay. deliberations. So we so would you, enter it so into you, that as well officially. That's okay, so you got three you got three, three motions. elements of a motion, yes. Okay, you got three motions. No, I have three elements in one motion. Three, one motion. One motion with three elements. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Second. All right. All I right. second the Mills motion, Strand. Okay, so we got a mo we got we got a motion with three elements. We got a second. Do we have any discussion? Well, I, I would like to add one comment. Okay. And, um, because it was brought up earlier that you know this came without being without being shown to the full committee in advance. 
Well, that's not the first time that's happened. As I recall, the first meeting that we held, we adopted a, a special resolution or an emergency resolution that wasn't shared in advance, and there was no problem at that time with that. So, Thank you for your comment. Commissioner Miller-Lopez, I'd like to make a comment or two. Yes, Commissioner. Um, and this is this is not not intended to any way disparage um, city staff. I did attempt to get this to Cheyenne um, ahead of our meeting to have it added to the to the online documents, but there it, there I didn't catch her in time. So um, we did try to get it to you ahead of time, but I just didn't give Cheyenne enough time to do it. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? I'm not going to repeat the motion in the three elements. It's, it's I'm not going to do that. Any more discussion? No call, please. OK, um, Commissioner Benda. Commissioner Benda. John Benda? I am here. Hi. Are, are you voting? Um, I'm sorry. I, I got lost in the last several minutes, and I apologize if some here. Um, so I, I'm going to abstain as a vote. Okay. Oh. All right, John Benda, abstain. Okay. Um, Commissioner Caius Claudio? Aye. Okay. Um, Commissioner uh, Lolita Davis Carter. I abstain. Uh, Commissioner Dito Swinton. Aye. Commissioner Gowan. Aye. Um, Commissioners Junek, Kimmins, Malone, Mariani, and Nuda Lee are absent. The next one, I. Uh, Commissioner Miller Lopez? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Marcus Mills? Aye. Commissioner Jeffrey Strand? Aye. And Commissioner Devin Wise? Aye. Uh, seven aye, two, no nay, two abstentions, and um, five absent. Okay, the recommendation has been approved and we'll move on. Moving on to reports. Number eight, plans for engagement work route forward with sunset of commission. Moving that to NCR staff. All right, um, Madam Chair, this is uh, David Rubador, Director of the Neighborhood and Community Relations Department. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of this uh, and then open it up for discussion. Um, but I just wanted to I wanted to start off a little bit more of a comment about what's actually happening now in our city and the challenges that we're, we're faced. Uh, we're facing and as we talked about right at the beginning uh, with with COVID hitting our communities as well as um, the George Floyd killing and the civil unrest that followed it. One of the things that beca has become abundantly apparent in the city work that's going on right now is the need for engagement in our community and to have broad based engagement um, to making sure that all all members of our community are able to participate. Um, all cultures are able to participate and all languages are able to participate. The demand for NCR's work and support has been like none other in the entire time that I've been in this position. So it, it that in, in on one level, as much as these are very um, significant and in many ways tragic issues that are facing our community, um, the need and understanding of why community engagement is so important is um, abundantly apparent um, to a lot of people. With that, I also want to mention, um, in addition to a lot of the community-based partners and stuff that we work with, 
um, uh, the neighborhood organizations have really stepped up very much big time in supporting the city in creating partnerships um, and able to address COVID and helping to get uh, not only um, uh, safety materials out for folks, masks, uh, sanitizers, but also just leading um, discussions within their own community, helping with the information that people need, um, uh, understanding uh, what some of the city guidelines are. It's been, it's been um, a really, really good time for neighborhoods and, and partnering with the city. I, I, and I really just want to point that out. That's not a, um, that's, that aspect of this work has not been lost on the city council and they're well aware of it. And we have been highlighting that work um, for the last several months. Um, and then also now with the George, George Floyd um, killing, um, we have actually been doing a lot of additional work with the neighborhoods um, down in South Minneapolis in particular, and especially along 38th and uh, Chicago. And so just wanted to let you know that um, I think the future of engagement in the city is, is, is excellent. Um, people are very excited. They also are very, the, the, the demands right now, I just want to be really clear, are very hard on the department, are very big on the department. Um, I believe we're stepping up to those um, and our community partners have really stepped up to that as well. So I'm excited um, uh, about uh, the role that we're going to play and the community is going to play in the city moving forward. So I just wanted to start with that. Um, you guys know that we're actually working on a um, citywide uh, engagement audit or evaluation that's still underway, even with the uh, um, onset of COVID and the civil unrest. Uh, that work is going. Cheyenne is leading that and she can probably speak a little bit more to that than I can. Um, we're about, it's, it has slowed down because of um, all the uh, aforementioned issues, but it is still underway. We're anticipating that to be com completed. I believe, uh, Cheyenne, correct me if I'm wrong, probably about mid-August to mid-September, somewhere right in there. Um, it is a thorough evaluation of all the departments and the type of work that they're doing. And it will ultimately lead to recommendations to the city council around um, formation of some more uh, robust uh, uh, community engagement policy for the city moving forward. It might, it might end up manifesting in an ordinance. It might be a policy. We're not exactly sure, but really the intent is to strengthen and coordinate um, the city's engagement work. Um, with that, we all, you guys are also aware of this community engagement commission that will be coming, um, that will be uh, when the, after the NCC shuts down, the commission will be coming up and uh, the new uh, community engagement commission will be coming up and running. And also the policy board will be, uh, the NRP policy board will be amended to actually um, strengthen it and then actually expand its work as well. Um, those things are those things will be informed through this engagement audit that's underway, and so I don't anticipate a lot of movement on that over the next month or two. But once that once that excuse me once that uh, audit is completed, we will um, uh, have strong recommendations that will come out and that will go to the council. So stay tuned for um, probably late the summer, early fall for uh, some additional things that are coming out regarding that, um, and. Then the last thing I just I think I mentioned this at the beginning um, when I was talking about um, the NCR and our staff being out in the community and that we're just have really been able to demonstrate how the community and the city can really partner together uh, in many different ways to address the issues that are before us. And so um, I think that, you know, um, a lot, I would say everybody has stepped up to the plate on this one. Um, across the city and really coming together to help our community. I will say just on a personal note, um, the morning, I think it was Saturday morning after the civil unrest, um, I think Friday night was, that Friday night was probably the worst. I was down on Lake in Chicago at about seven o'clock in the morning and the buildings, some of the buildings were still on fire and there were hundreds of people out in the street, sweeping the streets, cleaning them up, coming out in order to really re kind of reclaim their neighborhood and start working on it right away. And that kind of spirit and um, um, and uh, enthusiasm and commitment to commu their community was just really heartwarming. Um, and with the backdrop of all that had happened. And um, so I just, I thought that was really a very compelling, compelling thing as well as um, just really the commitment coming forward to address racial equity in our city and the institutional racism that has led us to this place. I will also say just also on a final note is 
that whatever comes of this work as the city does its work to kind of reset the engagement moving forward and the support for community engagement moving forward it's there's no question it will have a very strong racial equity component um, and a racial justice uh, component to to that work there's just no question that that's going to be part of what we do so with that um, i'll stop um, and just uh, that's basically the brief update you know logistically looking forward to later this summer when that audit is done and then we'll have more details for the community engagement commission as well as the policy the community engagement policy that will be coming out and i'll hand it back to the chair Madam Chair. Madam Chair is muted. I'm sorry. I had to step away for a minute. Discussion? We can hear you. You can hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm back in a minute. Was, was there a question for me? Uh, there was not. I was uh, that that concluded my presentation. I just wanted to hand it back to you. Oh, thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. David? I don't have a question. I do have a comment. I just wanted to say thank you for the great opportunity that um, the city of Minneapolis and your department has granted me. I have learned a lot. Um, and I really do appreciate um, the support that your staff, Cheyenne, has given me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really do. I have learned. I learned a lot. And um, I just really appreciate the work that you're doing. And I know that you're out in the community. And I know that your staff are out there because I've seen them out there. So I really do appreciate the city of Minneapolis. And I really do appreciate this department. I think you guys are doing great work. Thank you. And I also I just want to just say to for all the commissioners that are here today and all the commissioners that preceded you, mm -hmm. um, it's been it's been a great run. It's been an awesome experience working with all of you. I've learned a lot myself. I know along the way we've had our challenges. We had our um, opportunities. We had our fun together. Um, but I really appreciate all the commitment that everybody has shown to their community, to the to this work. Um, to supporting this and we're all doing it for the same reason that mm -hmm. we believe people need to have a voice and need to, be, needed to be included need to be included and every and we have to do our best to make sure that everybody gets to be included and so I know that you all um, hold that value um, and I know that even though this commission is coming to an end um, I will continue working with all of you in one capacity or another moving forward looking forward to that and also, we're probably going to have once we get a chance to get everybody together again physically in one spot, we'll have some kind of celebration of all the commissioners together. That sounds great. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I do. I do have one question for David, and that's just how can we stay up to date on progress and um, as new information comes from the city, what would be the best way for us to do that? Sure, uh, Cheyenne and uh, uh, or Rebecca could jump into this as well, but we do send out our newsletter on a regular basis. Keep track of that. Um, we do. Uh, Rebecca does a great job, I think, keeping our website up to date. Um, I would track uh, what's happening at the city council because there's going to be some big decisions coming up. Um, I'm sure you're on our. You, I know you're on our email list because we send out. We try to send out updates when there's some major things going on. And uh, Devin, you're always welcome to give me a call or send me an email directly, and I'll be happy to um, to fill you in on anything that you might feel you need more information on, or anybody else. Great, thank you. I just want to jump in and say that you can um, stay up to date on the citywide announcements at news.minneapolismn.gov, especially if the NCR website is down for a time. That's news.minneapolismn.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. Now we're going to move. Go ahead. We're going to move on to item under reports number nine. NRP 
Posse board updates. NRC, is that going to be Jeff? Yeah, I NRP. believe so. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. So the uh, NRP Policy Board had its uh, quarterly virtual meeting on June 16th. It was time to reorganize. So uh, in Minneapolis Public Schools Director Carrie Jo Felder was elected the new Policy Board Chair. Mm -hmm. And the other officers elected were um, Commissioner Wise as the uh, Secretary and uh, myself as Vice Chair. So thank you to uh, Mr. Gallagher, who I think is or was on the call for organizing the policy board and getting the presentation to us. Um, Bob Cooper presented on the neighborhood's response to COVID-19 fund. We talked about neighborhoods rebuilding responses along Lake Street in South Minneapolis and West Broadway Avenue in North Minneapolis. Had a report on the NRP fund status and the informational on a resolution to delay or cancel or hold on neighborhood organization annual meetings for obvious reasons. And uh, the group was interested in following up, so had decided to have meetings in July and August to be a bit more activated. The uh, legislature was in session at that time, if I'm not mistaken. And so the uh, senator was not able to attend. And um, essentially that is the report. Stand for questions if there are any. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Comments? Discussions? This is Commissioner um, Miller Lopez. Yes. Com Commissioner Strand, can you share what the um, those numbers were in terms of the um, remaining NRP funds. Yes, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioner Miller Lopez, the uh, report that we see, these are round numbers, the unspent, uncontracted, I believe was 19.3 million, and the contracted but unspent was $18 million. There was a spreadsheet that was provided. I have a question, Vice Chair. Is there a way that um, there there's a link or you could provide them with a link that they, I know that the information was provided, but sometimes like my internet, it goes down. Is there a link that people can go to that they can view that you have handy? If it's not, uh, it's okay. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I can go to the limbs. If it's permissible, I can just okay. link the Legislative Information Management System NRP Policy Board agenda to the uh, chat. Okay, yeah, that may be helpful to the commissioners. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for Vice Chair regarding the NRP Policy Board updates? Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to on the reports. Um, Number 10, item 10, closing statements for NCEC commissioners. Do we have any closing statements anyone would like to share? I'll just make my closing statement. I just want to thank all of my fellow commissioners and, and, and thank also the staff for all the hard work that everybody's put into this. That's now, it. now, what commissioner saying all that good stuff? That was Henry Gowan. Thank you, Mr. Gowan. Anybody else? This is I, uh, Mary Dito Swinton. Um, I, I also just want to thank all the commissioners who are on the call and the ones who weren't able to get on the call um, and for all your work and for the city staff for all your work. And I also want to say thank you to the three people who interviewed me first to get on this committee uh, commission. Um, I really learned a lot um, over these, I guess it's been two and a half or three years, I can't remember. But um, 
it really makes me it makes me feel proud to know that the city of Minneapolis is so concerned about engagement and its neighborhoods and um, because it's not all cities are like this. I've lived in several cities and this is by far the city has shown more concern for its residents and them and them having a voice and and being engaged in the city. And so I'm I leave this feeling proud of all the work that everyone is doing on the on behalf of the residents. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner. Yeah, Mills? I think I would I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Commissioner. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Wise. I was just going to echo the statements of my fellow commissioners and um, wanted to extend the, the offer to keep in touch. Um, you guys have my email and feel free to reach out as we as we continue forward in the absence of the commission. Thank you. Commissioner Mills. Uh, so I'd like to say also, um, yeah, feel free to contact me definitely, but I'd like to say that it is an honor. Uh, it has been an honor uh, serving with all of you, serving our communities, and um, it's it's been a pleasure uh, working with uh, working with y'all and the city and our neighborhoods and learning from uh, folks in our various uh, cultural communities. So, uh, basically, just saying thank you to everyone for. Uh, being a part of this, both present and past. Um, and I'll see you all in the future. Take care. Thank you. Any other commissioners? This is Commissioner Miller Lopez. Hi, Ms. Lopez, Commissioner Lopez. Go ahead. Um, so when I um, was um, asked by my colleagues in the South Minneapolis Neighborhood Associations can take one for the team and join the commission. <laughs> um, and it was an open seat and it had been open for a while and nobody was stepping up. Um, I really, I wasn't sure what I was taking on, but I would just like to express my gratitude for what uh, um, invigorating learning experience this has been for me. The um, quality of the engagement of this commission is um, something that I think should be a model for other groups moving forward. Um, and in my short time here, I feel like even in that short time, I've been able to affect um, change and make a difference through my presence on the commission. And I thank you all for welcoming me in at at the you know on the 18th tee and. Um, and allowing me to sort of particip participate fully. And I just appreciate all of you a great deal. Thank you, Commissioner Lopez. Anyone else? Well, I don't want to just, I'll, I'll, oh, go ahead, Vice Chair. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. I'd like to also thank uh, past colleagues and present colleagues. Um, I've taken kind of the long-term view as a past original NRP policy board member from 2000 and then being a founding member of Neighborhood and Community Engagement Commission. I just wanted to, again, maybe we'll do this in a final report, but um, the Community Engagement Task Force that was assigned by the City Council on which Director Rubidor sat and came up with the idea of this resident-based commission, uh, which I think has been successful and has delivered a large body of work for the residents things like the community participation program and undertaking 64 meetings throughout Minneapolis, the one Minneapolis fund that originated jointly with NCR and NCEC, work years ago on boards and commissions diversity, reaching out to other cities, making strong recommendations to the council, having the opportunity and like uh, Commissioner Mill said, the honor to have worked with such fine uh, residents and colleagues and you know, I, I don't like to call out specific people, but, you know, like uh, Commissioner Saeed O'Shea and Commissioner Ishmael Israel, Commissioner Nick Chikowitz, our past chair, and, uh, you know, all of the colleagues. And so I'm proud that this group brought into the city enterprise the uh, 
principles of community engagement from the International Association for Public Participation. So it's uh, sort of bittersweet. I, I really uh, appreciate the collegiality of this group and and wish everyone well and uh, I'm sure we'll stay in touch somehow and best wishes to all colleagues and city staff and a big thank you to everyone. Thank you, Vice Chair. Anyone else? Well, uh, and go ahead. Yeah, I'm Brenda here. Um, I just want to uh, say also what a pleasure it's been to meet all of you, and I hope we cross paths again. It should mean a lot to me. Um, I, uh, I'm just going to throw this out there, and I'm not going to explain it. Um, I have wanted to stay connected, even though the, the uh, commission will be ending. And um, I just want you to know I've submitted to the city council through my council member who was actually bringing it there a very comprehensive um, multi-leveled alternative to the police force. Um, and I'm doing that partly because I've worked in all the neighborhoods in Minneapolis for 25 years and with many of the BIPOC families who have been oppressed and racially traumatized. Um, so when George Floyd died, um, though I live on the periphery, more or less, um, I've been very involved and was pretty depressed for about a week. Um, and I just, my response to it, to stay connected to the city, not doing this anymore, was to write up this proposal. And it's, if anybody's ever interested in talking about it, or if it, it does get me into the dialogue, I'd be happy to share it with you. And I uh, just want to thank you all for, I don't know, just being part of this. I've learned a lot. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Binden. Anyone else? Well, in closing, <clears throat> I would like to say this is uh, Madam Chair Melita Davis Carter, is that I learned a lot from you guys, each one of you. Um, I know I don't always say the right things, but I think I told you that when you elected me. But I will say that each one of you guys have a talent and a gift for community that inspires me to be the best that I can be. You really brought me back down to basics. You grounded me as it relates to community relations and how it relates to neighborhood associations and how it relates to individuals that live in our populations and how we need to serve them better. So I respect each one of you guys' passions. Um, I'm going to miss this group. This is, oh, I'm gonna miss this group. Um, but um, I hope that we all do stay in contact with each other somehow, some form. I know that we will bump into each other, but each one of you guys got a special gift that um, is unexplainable. And I, I really do appreciate you. With that said, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Talk soon. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye -bye. Have a good night.